Hey guys, I'm Cody, editor of Mind Past Life Room. For today's video, I thought I'd finally invest some time into this popular request. Cody, what are your settings slash rendering settings for the softwares you use? Well, I won't keep you waiting. Let's get started. So this is how things are going to run. While we move through the softwares, if there are any important things that I'd like to touch on, believe me, I'll let you know. So as you can see on my desktop, I primarily work with these four softwares when I make YouTube videos. Yes, I do use After Effects and some occasions, but that's mainly when I'm working on video thumbnails with Photoshop, or when I create some super effectastic cinematics. Yeah, it's hardly ever, so we'll just be paying attention to the more important ones. Let's start off with my in-game recording software, the Xtori. This tab is mainly where you manipulate your FPS counter to whatever suits your needs, or anyone that might have wanted to see this. Folder settings. Though it may not look like much, this tab holds an extremely important tool, and that tool is your write speed meter. How this works is you set up your destination for your recorded clips, then you click the meter to test the speed of the hard drive it's being recorded to. To be able to record with the story without it lagging or choking up with my settings, hands down you need to have a write speed of around 120 megabits per second. You might be able to get away with 100 megabits per second, but in all seriousness, this is why some people get the idea of buying an SSD to record their gameplay. Heck, I bought a 2TB Western Digital hard drive specifically for recording footage. Which is also the one I've been recording my Fraps footage to, which is why my megabits per second is so low. Heh. <laughs> anyway, let's get on to the next one. Hotkey settings. Yep, these are my controls. Not much to look at. Movie settings. Yeah, here's where we get to the important stuff that will affect your end game footage. Most importantly, instead of using DxTory's inbuilt codec, I've chosen to use one called Lagarith Lossless Codec. My reason? Well, the original DxTory codec all too often clogged up Premiere Pro's buffer. Clips would even sometimes freeze during playback and I'd have to restart the entire software. In contrast to DxTory's codec, the Lagarith codec was designed with its smaller size to not clog up the software. So, to download the codec, I'll leave you a link in the description with some added help on getting everything working. Aside from this, I always leave my FPS at 60. Audio settings. A plus to using DX Tori is you can set up more than one audio track. So as you can see, my in-computer sounds are recorded specifically through my Realtek High Definition audio track, and my mic is being recorded through its own track. Just a little heads up for those of you who film with friends or do commentaries in general. Screenshot settings. Advanced settings. That concludes my DX Tori settings, so let's move on to my screen recording software, Fraps. General settings. To be able to record your desktop or pretty much everything on your screen, then I believe you need to have Monitor Aero Desktop DWM checked. FPS settings. Movie settings. For my video capture settings, I always leave my FPS at 60 and my resolution at full size, which is the clearest. Screenshot settings. All right, now let's move on to my main editing software, Premiere Pro CC. We'll start with my sequence settings, which are the settings I work with when I edit clips on the timeline. Nothing really too important for me to point out, so I'll let you get a good look at it. Now, my rendering settings for Premiere Pro. Most importantly, for my end video format, which goes to YouTube, I use H.264, and I don't use any particular preset, so we'll move down into the video settings. So, big ones. 1920 by 1080 frame rate at 60 render at maximum depth leave that box checked bit rate 70 megabits per second for the settings a bit lower down i always leave use maximum render quality checked and frame blending unchecked you don't have to worry about the effects audio or multiplexer tabs i never mess with them anyway to render my videos i start up adobe media encoder click q and i start the process from there okay let's move on to my last bit of software sony vegas pro 12 which is mainly used for post-processing. We'll start with the project properties, which, like the sequence settings in Premiere Pro, are the settings I work with when I edit clips. Nothing too important, but I'll give you some time to take it in. I actually work with a custom preset, so I'll show you that. Though most of it is probably stuff you're used to, I'd like to point out one thing. When I render clips in Sony Vegas, I render them with a Lagrith lossless codec, which is the exact same codec as the one I showed you in DxStory. This course of action is still the same. 
I don't want to clog up Premiere Pro since most all the Vegas renders are going directly to Premiere to be built into the final product. Anyways guys, if this software settings reference video was of any use to you, then do hit that like button. And before you go, don't forget to check out my channel for some more Minecraft tutorials, some pro quality cinematics, and a bunch of other videos that you shouldn't miss. Anyways, I'm Cody, and this is Past Life Pro, where creativity is always a part of my life, as it will be for yours. Alright, see you guys.